Cycloid is one of the most important topics in engineering drawing and to master it we have a question right here. But before that we first need to know what is a cycloid. A cycloid is a curve that is traced by a point on the circumference of a circle as it rolls along a straight line without slipping. So there is a straight line and a circle or a circular wheel is rolling on it. If we mark a point P on the circumference of the circle, the point traced by the total revolution of the wheel is curve it forms is known as a cycloid. So so now we know what is a cycloid, let's jump into the question. A circular wheel of diameter 35 mm rolls on a straight line on the ground without slipping. A point A lies in the rim of the wheel. Draw the locus of the point A for one revolution of the wheel. So we have to draw the cycloid for only one revolution. And it is said that the wheel has a diameter of 35 mm and there is a point A which we have to trace to form the cycloid. So here we can say that 35 mm, uh, the, the diameter is 35 mm. So to find the radius, we have to divide by two. So here we can see in the calculation, we, we also have to write the calculation while we are drawing it on a chart paper. So uh, radius equal to 35 by two mm equal to 17.5 mm. So to avoid the mishappening of the calculation, because we cannot uh, uh, measure 17.5 mm in a normal scale. So we will uh, approx it to 17 mm. So taking this as 17 mm, we will find out the circumference. 2 pi r, we will find it as 106.8 mm. So we will round off it to 107 mm. Now we have to draw a circle with radius 17 mm. So after we draw the circle, we have to draw a line, the base or the uh, line on which the circle will roll. The uh, length of the line will be 107 mm and we will uh, do it using a scale. We will draw the dimension far below the line so that there is no margin of the drawing and the dimension mentioned. Remember, we are not using a 35 mm diameter circle we are using a 34 mm diameter circle, the reason which I already explained. So we will mark it as 34 mm. Then in the next step, we will place the center. The center will not move for uh, any sort of movement because the center will stay at a, a single line. So then we have to mark the top portion. The We know that the diameter is fixed, so the top uh, line will also be fixed. So now we have to draw 8 cm line below with any angle. Uh, why I am saying 8 cm? Because we will divide the circle into 8 equal parts and the 8 cm we marked using a scale, we can divide it into 8 segments by using a compass or you can easily mark it using a scale. Every 1 cm mark a line and up to 8 cm there will be 8 points. Now if we uh, divide the circle into 8 equal parts, you can do it using a compass or a protector but remember the number of dots in the circle or the number of sections in the circle will be equal to the number of dots placed in the uh, line that we drew just now so now we have to join the last point of the line we mark to the last point of the line on which the circle or the wheel is rolling so to divide the uh, line on which the wheel is rolling we are using this method so we will use a roller and draw all the remaining lines after the lines are drawn we can easily find find out that the uh, whole line is divided into 8 equal segments. So now we can easily make perpendicular lines on it. So we will make perpendicular line. Always use a roller for better uh, measurements. So your diagram will look something like this. So now we have to draw lines that connect the dots of the circle we previously marked. The section of the circle will uh, tend to make such lines that you can see below. Now you can draw these, uh, all these lines, all the connecting lines using a roller. Always use a roller for better measurement. Now we have to mark the points of the circle. So we will mark it anti-clockwise. So the uh, numbering goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. You can also use 12 if you are comfortable or 6 if you are comfortable but I am doing it using 8 for better precision. So now we will uh, mark the center. The center of the circle is the original center is C0 then C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8. Now we need to measure the length of the radius. So to do that we will place the compass on C0 and measure the radius. Any radius you can take and then we have to place the compass on C1 and mark a arc on the line passing through 1. Then we have to place the compass on C2 and mark a arc on the line passing through 2. Then we have to place the compass on C3 and mark a arc on the line passing through 3. Like this we have to do for 4, 5, 6, 7, 
and 8. And after drawing all the arc, we have to draw a single line that uh, connects all these points using a free hand. So you will get something like this and this is the card we wanted. This is a cycloid. So now the question is not over yet. It says to draw a tangent and a normal at point P on the card. So here there is no data given through which we can understand from which point we have to draw the normal or tangent. So we will take C5 the line joining C, uh, C5 and the bottom line is taken. The point there and the arc we made while keeping our compass on C5. We we will take that point we will join the two points and this is the normal so uh, to find the tangent we will draw a 90 degree line a line at 90 degree by placing a protector we will mark 90 degree and then we will draw a line passing through that and this will be the tangent so this is the required diagram that we need to perform to get full marks don't forget that the question asked for a point a and p so you have to mark the point a and the point where the normal and tangent is joining as p 